and in mankind um, looking for peace, but they only looking for peace, 100%. They don't want no problem next to it. How mankind has to understand this world never going to be full of enjoyment or peace because you're not belong to this world. This world, you're not going to find comfortability. And mankind also always complain about, I have this problem, but that problem, little problems, when they start talking. How they got to understand not to have one problem which is like you have kidney disease or brain tumor. Now all your problems are gone, but you have only one problem now. So how people have to understand this peace and a small problem has to be balanced in this world. Majority of 21st century, the culture that they are trying to make people to, to have, to consume, is not about peace nothing to do with peace. It has to do with fun. It's not about peace. Yeah. Even when you have peace, it's boring, it's not fun, why you do it? Anything, it must be fun. Fun means it makes you happy. Yeah. But what is the you that is happy? What is the fun? We're looking so many times, it is foolish things, things that is for your ego then that's fun. So it becomes about enjoyment. You understand? Pleasure and enjoyment is not about peace. They want to have pleasure and they want to have enjoyment. And over and over again, Allah is saying, this life, pleasure and enjoyment, this, that, this is all just games. So mankind has not changed for thousands of years. We've become even worse. This is Ahir Zaman. We're going back to Jahiliya times. This is the second Jahiliya. And anything that is not fun, it is terrible. Anything that is hurting is disaster. Anything that is hurting, it is disaster. They're saying, I don't want to say wrongly, but they said there was one ruler, let us say, He wanted to have one day of complete enjoyment. From the minute he wake up to the time that he was going to sleep, it was his complete enjoyment. All the pleasures in the world he was going to have. Yeah. And he did. From the best food, best clothes, best women, best music, everything was enjoying. And he was enjoying it so much, he was eating. And he choked on a bone and he died. The reality is that this world is not a place for enjoyment. You can have ease like this, like that sometimes, yes. But it is not. From which religion is saying? This world, you must sit and you must enjoy. Which one? Uh, no religion says that. Which philosophy really tells you you have to enjoy, enjoy, enjoy? Ah, the Greek small group of people, they're thinking we need to enjoy this, but it doesn't work. So the reality is, we know that this world is a world of separation, is a world of suffering. Why? Why? Why is it a world of suffering? No, people who don't believe in nothing, don't talk about soul, religion, nothing. Because when you speak to people of the 21st century, you don't assume they even have anything, any belief. Then you can reach to them. Why is this world suffering? Because there is death. That's why it's suffering. You don't have to be a Muslim to believe in death. You don't have to be a believer. You can deny Allah all you want. You will still die. And our way to death is not beautiful. Our way to death, you get worse and worse and worse. You get old, you get decrepit, you get rotting, yeah, disease, and then you die. We're not like 
butterflies. You know how butterflies, when they die, they become the most beautiful and then they die. Some people, they want to be like that. And I say, how cursed it is. You can't even now enjoy your beauty, yes? Because you know, the more beautiful I am, the more I'm going to die. So because there is death, that is real now. Ha. Huh. Are we, even as Muslims, a people who remember death, who talk about it, who is looking forward to that kind of good death? No, we're not. We are not rushing because we don't know how to live, so you don't know how to die. What are we living for? What are the Muslims living for? They're living for their countries. They're living for their ideologies. They're living for their families. They're not living for Allah. You say by tongue, we live for Allah. What does that mean, living for Allah? What does that mean, living for Allah? You cannot say, yeah, I belong to the army, and then do whatever you want. Can anyone say that? If you do whatever you want and you're in the military, they will court-martial you. You cannot even walk out of step. Everyone has to walk. So we had a mission. We had a purpose. We had an aim for 1400 years. We lost that aim when we lost the Khalifa. There is no reason now. Everyone just, just everyone go home, show's over. This is what they say. Nothing to see anymore. No more this, no more that, no more nothing. Just go home, enjoy yourself, and wait for the angel of death to come. That's why we're filled with problems. We're filled with problems. That's why all these problems that we have, even if we have all luxury and everything, these problems become very real. Because we're not making that aim to become very real. One of the things that makes this tariqat beautiful, following Shaykh Effendi, following Shaykh Malana, is not just another tariqat that says, come close to Allah, have some zikr, yes? Learn some ilm. Yes or no? What is it? What makes this way different? And what makes this way to be more immediate? Hmm? What? Every tariqat also can talk about that. You can even make hizmat without being in tariqat. Huh? No, step on. There are so many nakshubandi ways also. They also talk about the ego. You don't have to be a nakshubandi also to talk about stepping on the ego. Yes? Every tariqat talks about that. Yes, we concentrate on that, but what makes this very special? What makes Shay Malana's way, Chef and his way, very special? No. No. What? Not really. You can bring, uh, everyone loves the Ottomans now, Yani. They're not even belonging to Tariqat. Some are not even Muslim. They love it. No, I'm, no, I'm talking about an aim. No. Our aim is to prepare ourselves for Mahdi alayhi salam. That is our aim. Loving each other, Ottomans is, yes, all of that, but where is it going to? Eh? Then what? Brotherhood, okay, hizmat, then what? It has an aim. Aim means everything comes, is not just open like this. Everything comes to one point. This is Ahir Zaman. This is Second Jahiliya. Mahdi alayhi salam is going to come. We must prepare for him. This, everything that we're doing is preparation for that. You take that out, then so what? What's so different now? You can be a Christian, you can be a Jew, you can be a non-believer and also have love each other, hizmat to each other, brotherhood. Yes or no? Step on your ego. You can also have that. Because it's waking the Ummat up. Ah, now we know. We are not just floating in time. Muslims have never floated in time. At every time, 
with the halifas, with the alims, with the ulamas, and the awliya, they say, eh, that's why we have sahibul waqt. We have the sahibul zaman. We have the owners and the sahibs and the masters of the time, of the epoch, of the situation. They say, okay, now this is our aim. Now, next. Then you can start forming one chain. Now we're just floating. We don't know what is our aim. The halifas, they have an aim. Yes? We have no halifa. What is our aim? We become individualistic nation states, each with their own political aim. We cannot say sincerely it is for Allah. There is disconnection already. You don't have a halifa, how can you be an ummah? Then everyone, instead of having one head, then there are millions of heads now. This is Ahir Zaman. Uh, we understand the tricks and the traps of Ahir Zaman that is outside, external in the world, and also inside the tricks and traps of Ahir Zaman that is in you, because we're all products of this Ahir Zaman. Maybe you pray very good, maybe you know a lot of Quran, maybe you know this and you know that, but there is sickness of the Ahir Zaman that is inside of you that is a poison that is rotting you from the inside. And it says so many times, why have to listen to him? He is wrong. Why have to do this? This one is better. That why, that questioning, that doubt. And they are going to test you. So there is an aim. People are running because for the longest time there was no aim. Nobody knew what Halifa. Nobody even knew the Ottomans. Shaykh Mawlana was talking about the Ottomans in the 70s, in the 80s. Of course he was talking about it earlier, but it became more well known. The Muslims didn't know about the Ottomans. And why are we also concentrating on the Ottomans? Because the Ottomans have to return for Mahdi salam to come to declare. If you are not Ahli Jannah trying to be here, you will never be Ahli Jannah in the hereafter. That's it. It's very simple. If you are living like an Ahli Nar, Ahli Jahannam here, you are going to be in Jahannam later. You are going to be with what you love, whom you love, where you love. And that is also a difficulty amongst people coming in this way because their loves are also divided. They say, we love Shah Effendi, but we also love this, and we also love that, and we also love this. We love these kinds of teachings. We love those kinds of teachers. We love this, and we love that. So everything is divided now. Everybody comes with their own experience. But if you allow it to be divided, if it doesn't come to one, to one direction, there is going to be trouble because we are going to be tested with what we love. And things that don't come into this way, we realized long time ago, we say we put that away. We put that apart. It has no place here. To walk on this way, you have to let go of everything. You're carrying your loves, you're carrying knowledge, you're carrying this, they say let go. It is so difficult, you cannot carry it. Let go. Once you start letting go, you feel very light. Once you feel very light, you understand, oh, they are carrying me. That's why I'm feeling very light. What if I let go more? That time you will fly. Then that time you'll understand, oh, it's them, it's not me. Letting go of all of that is difficult. People are going to say, well, what about this, what about this, what about this, what about this? Everyone comes, like I said, with their own experience, with their own understanding. Right and wrong, they come with that. But you come in this way, they say, empty, empty your cup. So we are here because we have a direction. We are not here just, you understand, for love just for this. Everything is, 
making it strong for us, now we have an aim, and there is a time, and there is a place. Otherwise, it's useless. It's useless. Why are you doing this? I don't know. They just told us to do this. Oh, you're all in training? Yeah, we're in training. For what? I don't know. For paradise. Are you in paradise now? No. So the Osmanla and Akshabandi way is different. Understand the Jahiliya inside now. Okay, Yani. It's difficult. You feel that sometimes you're not even making progress. Don't worry so much about that. What you must worry is your connection, your love, and your submission to your share. That you must worry. That you cannot assume. No, it's there. I'm just holding on, it's there. No, you cannot. You must look at it again and again. You must check and check and check. And you must be awake and aware how the enemy is going to attack, where the weakness is going to be. Before the weakness comes, you're going to say, this is weak, it's going to be like this, I have to maintain it. Never assume I have to maintain it. So, Peace comes with its own enjoyment. Peace comes with its own taste. And that taste does not depend on how big it is. The taste, then, you'll find it everywhere. You don't have to try so much to have fun, to have fun. You see, small things, you will have taste. Even when there's nothing, it just comes to your heart. If Chef Effendi is talking about people who love each other, words finish. Words finish. Their hearts start moving, yes? What about our love to our Shaykh, the Allah, our love to Prophet and Allah? Now your heart starts moving now. You don't need anything. Just peace and enjoyment and taste will come to you. So sometimes it's difficult, you're made to go through certain tests. Don't despair. Because sometimes we're looking, some people say, oh, I don't know why is this always happening to me, I'm trying, I'm trying. So don't worry. Because in so many ways, if you don't have that, you're going to be worse. When you don't have that, um, problems. You are in this way of haq, you're following the shah, you're the but you have so many difficulties, challenges. So I say, don't worry, you understand the, uh, the wisdom of that. Because if you don't have that, I'm seeing, you're going to be worse. You're going to take off somewhere. You're going to be off somewhere. We're seeing it in front of our eyes. No? People who have problems, they go back to the jahiliya. They become even worse. And when they didn't have problems, they were very, very far away. So that is, you're following, you're saying, I have no doubt, I'm following. But certain things I'm going through, understand, is there for your protection. Accept it, inshallah, understand? Make your peace with it, and just say, ah, it's okay. So, It's become more shaitanic, people of 21st century. It's not about peace. It's about jumping from one thing to another to make them more and more and more exciting. There's no peace. When you feel peace, they say, well, oh, you're quiet, you're depressed. Once you start thinking, that's depression. That is hell for them. Paradise for them is moving like a, like a fire, burning everything, like a jinn. You understand? It has become like that. So, if you are not connecting, 
your life and your problems with Allah, with your guide, with your aim, then it's easy for you to separate. I know so many people, they make zikr, but then they have problems, they don't connect it together. They listen to sohbat, they do so many things, but personal things happen to them and there is no connection. It, it looks as if in that situation they lost their faith. Faith is not there. Why is that? Because there's a lack of connection in your lives to this way and to Allah. Lack of connection. When there is a connection, you know. Even if it's something simple. You, kid does something, or you have argument with your family, or this or that, there is a connection. When you look for it, it's always there. And then you can pull yourself back. I understand shaitans, they are meaning to attack us more. We are the ones who got away. You think they're not going to try to be busy? We are the ones who got away, trying to get away. Of course they will. So look to your weak Weakness. Don't look to your strengths. Look to your weak spots. I'm stubborn. That's a weak spot. Look to that. Take care of it. Wa min Allahu tafiq al fatiha. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Ta. This much is enough, I think. Yeah. Anything else?